Hi, you guys, and welcome to What the Flick. I'm Christy Lemire of the Associated Press. It's kind of a wacky week. There's a ton of movies out this week, but none of them are very good. It's very strange. <laughs> um, to my left is the lovely and talented, multifaceted Jonathan Kim, who is not just from Rethink Reviews, who is not just from the Huffington Post, who is not just from here on the Young Turks on Fridays. He is now a multi-platform, multi-threat on KPFK. Thank you very much. Yes, so I am. So welcome. He's like Ryan Seacrest. You're like the Korean Ryan Seacrest. <laughs> I can only... How does it make you feel? I hope that doesn't happen. That's awesome. <laughs> Except the, for Seacrest money. And, yes, uh, that's coming though. That's coming really, really soon. Um, so we, there are like 12 movies opening this week. We're going to get to two of them. The first is Secretariat, the little horse that could. Actually, he's a big horse. What's it about? Well, it's like the blind spot, but except for a black blind kid. Side. Blind side. <laughs> yes, it, it's, a, it's a black kid. Uh, this one is a horse. It's the horse that captured America's heart and won the Triple Crown and is the story of Penny Chenery, uh, played by Diane, by, um, by Diane Lane, who, uh, who takes over ownership of the horse and the family stable. And it's Disney, so you know that everybody dies at the end, as oh, happens in all the Disney movies. Spoiler alert! Can we try out our spoiler alert graphic, please? They change Everyone the ending. They have they shoot Secretariat at the end. He breaks his leg, and uh, oh. spoiler alert. Sorry about that. All right. But anyway, here's the trailer for it. <laughs> in frenzied excitement, he eats up the ground. He paws fiercely, rejoicing in his strength, and charges into the fray, afraid of nothing. operation you need a certain touch you're a housewife i feel like i could make something work yes this is a gentleman's club miss i need a good trainer just to get things stabilized you need a lucian lauren she dresses like superfly she's trying to retire i'm tired of babysitting half-ton animals who are stubborn as their owners are any other questions how much did you spend on that hat? Well, Mr. Lauren, what do you think? I think he eats too much. He lays against the back of that starting gate like he's in the Caribbean. Secretariat is not afraid, and neither am I. Horse racing is unforgiving for housewives. It's like every other multi-million dollar gamble we housewives make every day. <laughs> All right, then. Let's show them what you're made of. There you go. Do you think the horse wins in the end? Suspense is tearing me up inside. What are our thoughts? Well, uh, the horse racing parts are fun because uh, horse racing is fun to watch. And they have there's a few scenes where they put cameras like on the horses and you're galloping along with them and that's fun. But the rest of the movie, it's okay. I mean, like it, you everyone knows what happens. And I mean, for me, it's just hard to get excited about it because it's like. Horse racing is all about the ultra rich trying to make more money from horses. And in this, like, they keep talking, about, they talk about, like, oh, she saves her family because she, I mean, essentially her dad dies and owns this horse ranch and where they are a horse breeding uh, facility. And he had, there's, owes a lot of money and back taxes or whatever. So she takes it over, even though it's not considered her role to do that. And, uh, you know, kind of puts everything on this, on this great horse called Secretariat and, but in the end, it's like, saves her family from what? Like, a life in the upper middle class? Right. Like, she <laughs> happens to have been born very, very wealthy. And she has this husband who's a lawyer. And they have this fantastic house in Denver. And she's starting to juggle these two lives, each of which would be fantastic in and of itself or, or whatever. So she's not exactly an underdog, I guess. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I mean, like, you see the, the, the horse breeding facility. It's huge, sprawling place with all these meadows and, you know, all these horses in it and everything. And it's just, and it feels so divorced from reality. I mean, it takes place in 1973. And every once in a while, they kind of bounce back to one of the daughters who who is against the war and um, is try, trying to be in, put on this pageant that, that at her high school that's against the war. And so it's like, at one point, you're in this, like, total fantasy world of the, of the, of the horse breeding and stuff like that, then they bounce back, she makes a phone call, and it's like, and meanwhile, Vietnam is happening. Right, but they don't say the word Vietnam, right. It's this hugely tumultuous time in the country, and they make kind of one oblique reference to it on TV during, I want to say it's the Preakness, where they show a television and they show like random hippies and other people kind of like hugging and side by side, because this horse is united, a, a wrecked nation, and yeah. that's like basically the, it. Yeah, which yeah. they never actually explain 
why the horse unified the nation. I mean, I, I guess because it's a good story. Yeah, it's an interesting get story. Behind it, you know. But yeah, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, you know, back in the real world, Vietnam is happening, <laughs> and there's a there's a point where Diane Lane is is talking to her daughter on the phone, and she is like, "Honey, like." I'm not going to take a position on whether, I mean, she basically says, I'm not going to take a position on whether Vietnam is right or wrong. Mm -hmm. But the fact that you're expressing yourself is really the most important thing. Right, through headbands and very colorful posters. And then, like, there's some guy in the background with some, like, Che Guevara looking hat. And that's, like, the extent of their. Yeah, yeah. and I mean, I mean, the movie is very much aimed squarely at middle America. Mm -hmm. And the, there's a bunch of, re there's religious references that happen in the movie a few right. times. It, the movie starts off with a quote from the book of Job. Mm -hmm. And at a few points, gospel music plays. Oh, happy day. In case you didn't know the horse is going to win. They, right. they kind of like <laughs> trumpet this with oh, happy day. In case you didn't know you're supposed to be happy. It's a good song. It's a happy song. But like, it just yeah. kind of comes out of nowhere. But I think it just adds religiosity to the film, which I guess is what middle America is going to want. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's just, it's a movie that, I mean, uh, Diane Lane makes some cringeworthy speeches, I thought, um, about you got to fight, you got to take life on, you know, t take it head on and just go at it. And it's like, oh, It's some like tortured metaphor about life isn't what's going on now, it's what you run toward. And then her husband says, what if you stumble and fall? It's just, it's, right. it's painful. It's then, because horses run towards things, especially when they're racing, thing. they run fast a finish so, line. so you can mesh the ideas together and um, my favorite is when she goes to the horse in the stable the night before the Belmont he's already won the Derby and the Preakness and she goes and talks to him in the still of night in her in her evening gown and like no one's around she goes I don't care what happens tomorrow because no matter what I've run my race and I've run and I've won and now it's time for you to run your race or whatever so yeah it's even for somebody like Diane Lane who is lovely and versatile and solid and has a great presence about her like even she can't make these corny yeah. lines and work right she, did she look orange to you <laughs> i mean she looked kind of like pat nixon she had like, this perfect quaff like if you want to see diane lane looking kind of kind of milfy in a series of like great little polyester suits and perfect hair yeah, and, it's for you. And then the rest of the cast, there's, I mean, is all kind of stock characters. There's John Malkovich has the curmudgeon -y, grumpy sort of trainer. There's, um, let's see, what, what's her name? Uh, Margot Martindale as sort of the, yeah. the, the sort of sassy kind of matronly type. And then there's the there's the friendly black guy, uh, Nelson Ellis. Yes. Who, uh, He's magical, too. Yes, he, he is really <laughs> magical. Uh, yeah. he, at a point, they say, he talks to horses through his hands by washing and brushing them. <laughs> <laughs> so. and, and he's the reason we have Oh Happy Day the first time around. I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> but now, it's, uh, no, I mean, it's, it's very much, I think, like Miracle, which is also a big Disney sports movie, in that you know exactly how it's going to end. And so the challenge becomes, how do you still make it interesting when everybody in the room knows what's going to happen? Because he won Triple Crown, and no one's done it since. So I think that the, the, the racing scenes are staged really beautifully and really cleverly, because each one looks different. Like one is like you're on the horse one is the family watching it on tv they're watching the i thought that was on that TV. was a kind of a cool idea that was to have clever, them watch it on tv a different perspective and then the third i mean it's it's actually quite breathtaking because he wins by like 31 lengths or whatever but the way they sort of stop for a moment and just like let the hooves make the noise and it's 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 technically well done. It's very I mean, creamy as it, and as golden. As it should be. I right. mean, it's a Disney expensive movie. They had yeah. no reason not to. I mean, how can you mess up horse racing? You know, in yeah. terms of making that interesting. Like, I don't give a damn about horse racing, but I watch the Kentucky Derby every year. Right. You know, I mean, for the hats, if nothing else. Yeah, I don't watch the three hours that precedes the minute and a half race. But I mean, to actually watch the race is kind of fun. You yeah. know, and. You know, I've been to the Hollywood racetrack and bet on some horses, and that's just like a fun thing to do. But I mean, yeah, it's in in the end, I just I, it's of the movies of dubious <laughs> value. Yeah, I people in my screening room were cheering. There, you know what? Clapping same with, and cheering. Same with me. I think and they were plants, though. I think they might have been like horsey plants because they weren't people I usually see at screening rooms. That's an inter That's an interesting idea. <laughs> yeah, maybe people were like inviting like their grandparents or their their uncles yeah. and stuff like that, and just like, hey, you want to feel good? <laughs> want to see happiness, you know, happiness and no darkness at all for a second. And but and also, I mean, I think the whole thing about her family, she has four kids and she just kind of spends most of the movie kind of away from them. And I suppose that's supposed to make a statement about her independence. But she does strand her husband <laughs> with four kids. Right. God forbid the man does a load of laundry in his lifetime. No, but it must. It was a different time in that. Right. Yes. She that's does, true. you know, what, what seems quaint and archaic now, the idea of her like being a strong woman in a man's world. It was sure. kind of revolutionary, I guess, for that that insular kind of man's man world. Anyway. Right. I mean, the, the argument in terms of like, but like the family needs you happens for like 
two seconds, and right. then every but then everything works out fine. Where all the kids are all happy that she's doing it. No one misses her for a second, and you know it just seemed a little weird to yeah. me. Yeah, and the husband who is is Dylan Walsh from Nip Tuck, like he is singularly unimpressed by the fact that she is so determined and that she's taking on a traditionally male role. Um, he's pissed because yeah, he's got to figure out how to get dinner on the table and do laundry. But also, I mean, yeah. he's a lawyer. I mean, he's got a job too. He I does. mean, so. I don't know. And, and She's got to stay in the home. That's she what I'm does. saying. She does. Right, barefoot. <laughs> that was my big flaw in the right. movie. She, she didn't stay at home. Let's do but, numbers. Um, I gave it a five. I mean, you could see it. You could not see it. If you see it, it'll be okay. You're not going to be offended or upset by it. Like, it's all right. <laughs> you know, like, like, you'll have an okay time. Or you could see something else. Whatever. Five. <laughs> I also give it a five um, for pretty much the same reasons. It's beautiful. It's very golden and creamy, and the racing scenes are good. But, yeah, it's just cheesy, corny, hacky, heavy-handed. So for those of you doing math at home, <laughs> if I give it a five and John gives it a five, our average is... Ten. It's no. ten <laughs> divided by two, carry the four. It's a five. It's math for journalists. Okay. <laughs>